know, it's not often that our final main story of the day would be about a poster. I, I don't know that, I can't remember the last time that's ever happened around here, but man, we got to talk about this one. Because later in the day yesterday, Marvel put out a happy 4-4 day poster showing off the Human Torch, which I think gives us, I mean, obviously this is an art style rendition of Human Torch, yeah. but I do think it gives us a bit of an idea it's about what it's going to look like. a 60s World Fair vibe. Now, that's not the interesting part of the poster. The interesting part of the poster is on the bottom half of the poster. Here comes the reveal. Of the cityscape behind him. I'm not an architectural student. That is not our earth. That's not our world. That is a, that looks to me like a 1960s idea of a utopia. <laughs> More yes, kind does. of a thing. Which has, and by the way, let me preface everything we're going to say by saying this. This is just a poster. It could mean a million different things. It doesn't necessarily mean what we're going to talk about right now. We're just saying it could. Because what that image suggests to a lot of people, including myself, is an idea that some people have said right from the beginning. This Fantastic Four doesn't happen in the main MCU. By the main MCU, I mean the one that, you know. 616. Yeah, the 616, the one that Steve and Tony did all the, the stuff and all that kind of stuff. Not the one that, uh, you know, she ends up in the other universe with Beast, Hank McCoy, and and whatever. Not not any, but our main MCU. And Rob, if this movie does not take place, at least initially, in our MCU, it explains a couple of things. Number one, one of the questions all of us have asked about a Fantastic Four film is, okay, well, Fantastic, why has nobody ever in the MCU mentioned the Fantastic Four? Even if they were around in the 60s and then disappeared, I mean, that would have been the original superhero team in that world. How, how were they never mentioned? All that kind of stuff. Theoretically speaking, and I think you've brought this up yourself before, Rob, actually, because so Nostradamus here. Some people said that this would explain, if they were from another Rob universe Thomas. and then maybe end up in ours, <laughs> That would explain that little, you know, um, inconsistency, if that's the case. It also opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. Now, I'm not much of a fan of multiverse, but this could make things work. This could be a mechanism that makes the whole machine run. Guys, we want to take a moment and thank a sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by overpriced wireless providers, if we've learned anything, is that there's always a catch. So when I heard that for a limited time, all Mint Mobile wireless plans are $15 a month when you purchase a three month plan, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they sell wireless services online. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings on to you. And guys, you know, ever since I switched over to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than one third on my wireless bills than I used to with one of the major carriers. So say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw dropping monthly bills and unexpected overages. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions may apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Anyway, Rob, you saw this poster What's your first thought on it? Well, I have so many thoughts about this. <laughs> but uh, my Rob Stradamus, uh, I will put on my Rob Stradamus hat. And I would say that it makes sense to me that this, the Fantastic Four, come from an alternate, the world of the future today, you know, and maybe, and I don't believe that the Fantastic Four, I think the Fantastic Four are already the Fantastic Four before they get their superpowers. Like, I'd love to see a scene where John F. Kennedy 
says, you people, you're like the Fantastic Four, you know, and, and somebody lit. And they By the way, off. that was the best John F. Kennedy impersonation I've ever heard. Just just want to throw that out there. Say, hey, you're the Fantastic Four, right? <laughs> we, do <John> these things. <laughs> we do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Okay, there um, you go. So, so you, you, so I, and I, if the Fantastic Four, they blast off into space and they never come back. You know, they, they disappear. Whatever happens to them, happens to them, and they go on a cosmic odyssey right out of the burn Fantastic Four run in the 80s, which I loved. Because the Fantastic Four were always about, you know, super science, and they've said Galactus is the villain of the movie, but let's say they go into a dystopian future. Like, people were talking about Shala Ball yesterday. I'm like, you know, she was, she is the Empress of Zen Law. She has been in Silver Surfer since... Uh, uh, issue one and if you've read like i have a, a special edition of earth x it, it comes in a plastic machine man thing it's really cool i loved earth x which is this future where shallow ball is given the power uh cosmic i think by the franklin richards iteration of galactus if a fantastic four wind up uh, on this cosmic odyssey in this unbelievable future this dystopian, who knows what's going to happen, but it's a very John Byrne, Jack Kirby-esque fantastic odyssey. It makes sense that they might have gone into a future where they meet their unborn child as Galactus, you know, as a celestial. Who knows? Because they're the. that's the way they could get away with doing a Kirby-esque kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, you could you, you could go anywhere. You could have the, the that super science. You are no longer constrained by our world. And I'll tell you something. I think our world, if you look at the Tim Story, fant we've had four bad Fantastic Four movies. If you include the Corman one. If you include yeah. the Corman one. And but I think part of what's hampered the Fantastic Four is they're they're set in the real world. When I when I saw the Fantastic Four Tim Story's version, the Fox versions, it seemed so mundane. I'm like, they don't belong in New York City. Like, I want to see the New burn, York City. Kirby, York. super science future. You know, I want to see that. And if you give us that, and these posters seem to be saying, this poster in particular is what the World's Fair view, what the Tomorrowland and Disneyland yeah. view of the future is. You give me that Fantastic Four movie, that's closer to what The Incredibles was. You know, The Incredibles, everyone says The Incredibles, the animated, the Pixar movie is kind of right, like right. It's the best Fantastic Four it's movie It's the best Fantastic made. Four yeah. movie. <laughs> and I think a guy like Matt Shackman after WandaVision and going the direction that Shackman went in by showing us the sitcoms and all that, which was nutty, which was crazy. He's the kind of guy that would pull something like this off. Mm -hmm. And because they got to do, look, James Gunn and Matt Shackman are in the same place. They both have franchises that are on the ropes. They have to do something. This is, this is the re you, you've got Wolverine and Deadpool and Wolverine, teeing up but that's the end of the fox era and the beginning of something else this movie is the reignition of marvel it's mm. that important and i think just like superman is the reignition of whatever they're going to do at dc this movie is going to establish and i'll tell you something else do, going in this direction i think is going to be a banger i think it's going to be a banger if you just had to watch them in the baxter building in today's new york city it'd be like who cares who cares yeah i Listen, I, I got the main thing for me that has me excited about this is just that it's Matt Shackman doing it. I mean, we've talked about that before. WandaVision, I honestly, in the last five years, I don't think we've had as much engagement on our YouTube channel as much as WandaVision did because people started to joke. Like for the last three months, this has just been the WandaVision channel because whenever we went to live questions, everything was about WandaVision. All the questions was about speculation about the next episode and blah, blah, blah. And something that really Marvel on Disney Plus hasn't been able to replicate since that first one. So seeing him come in here and doing this and maybe they're doing something kind of wild. I don't know. But I think this poster <laughs> brings up some really, really interesting I, possibilities. One, one other thing, John, is that the Marvel Cinematic Universe began. There was a reality to it. Iron Man 1. You go back and watch Iron Man 1. It's very much set in our world. Sure, there's super science. But it's, it's in our world. But by the time you get to the end of Endgame. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has become more comic booky with the cosmic nature of the universe. We've seen Xandar, we've seen all this other stuff happening. So when you go back like into the quantum realm for it seemed goofy. It wasn't cool. It wasn't like they needed to go more Jack Kirby instead of going into this goofiness 
which mm. is like the, the the cantina in Star Wars. Right. And the tone was wrong. This is going to take where I think the Marvel Universe should have gone after Endgame. Of course, we're, I'm making all this up. It's speculating. Oh, yeah. We, 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 yeah, just be clear. We're speculating. I don't yeah, know anything. Absolutely. I don't know anything about this movie other than the fact I, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? I mean, the poster seems to hint that this movie will at least not start in the 616, what is our Marvel Cinematic Universe? Does that open up some possibilities for you? Does it worry you? What, whatever you guys think about this, jump into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.